Welcome everybody to the Civi Accounting Session 101. Um, I'm being videoed <laughs> twice. <laughs> um, so uh, first off, how many people are already Civi users in here? Uh, let's do this another way. How many people are not Civi users, maybe? OK, one. OK. <laughs> we'll try and, try and walk you through and explain any of the terms. OK. Um, how many people are already using some of the accounting type functionality in Civi they think? <laughs> how many people are not using the OK and kind of trying to get a better idea for how to kind of go about it and get all of that working? So um, let's try and make this a little bit less you know, tutorial and like do stop at any point, ask some questions. I might not have the answers to everything because obviously every use case is different and everybody thinks about things a little bit differently. But this was kind of the way that Civi has been thought of for accounting and how it's developed over, over the last few years. Um, so let me just introduce myself. My name's uh, Jamie Novick. I'm here from uh, a company, CompuCorp. Uh, we're a digitalized, uh, digital agency specializing in open source. Um, I said this a couple of times today. Um, so we uh, we like to build stuff. So uh, what you might find is that some uh, the digital agencies, some of the agencies that work with Civi CRM, tend to be okay. Here's Civi. We'll install it for you. We'll configure a couple of custom fields. We tend to build a lot of new functionality. We uh, are we built as you saw at the extension showcase uh, several extensions as well, which are widely used. Um, but also working on the Civi HR project, building kind of big projects, and we work very closely with the core team on a number of projects, uh, including this around the accounting work as well. Um, and just to mention very briefly, some of the people that we've worked with, uh, Wikimedia, uh, we're doing a big project with Healthwatch in the UK to roll out Civi to a, a number, I think it's 100 sites in the UK, 120 sites in the UK. Farm Africa on Civi HR, the Photographer's Gallery, a very exciting project there to roll out Civi. Uh, to the gallery and then integrate it with their finance and accounting systems. The ATL, a big project, they've got you know, 200 staff across the UK, 100 branches, getting Civi rolled out there, then a number of other projects, all different shapes and sizes. Okay, so in terms of today, and people tell me if I go too fast or too slow, um, I'm going to talk uh, briefly about understanding accounting Civi. So what's the basis? What do we need to know? What is there? Uh, and this has kind of been in there from 4.3 forward. So now it's you know it's it's been there for a little while. So, um, but it used to be used to be quite new. Um, and then I'm going to jump on to what's new in Civi 4.6 plus. So this was the version that came out in. Would it been about this time last year? Maybe something like that. Yeah, so something like that. So 4.6 plus. I'm not going to touch too much on 4.7 because there isn't too many changes from from our point of view for that. Um, there's some other payment changes, which is, is not kind of Im of importance to us at this stage. Um, and then I'm just going to briefly touch on some of the other options that you might want to think about for how you're going to get your accounting to work, uh, just to kind of open the discussion there uh, around how things are going. OK. So understanding accounting in Civi 4.3, or trying to understand accounting in Civi 4.3. OK. Uh, and I actually stole these slides from somebody else. So we'll see how we get through them. Uh, so five points. Define integration. Um, so um, accounting in Civi, the idea for Civi's accounting is the fact that you have probably got a separate accounts package, a separate accounts package in your organization, which is dealing with you know, all of the income that's coming into your organization and all of the outgoings from your organization as well, and all the funny little accounting bits that, that, that come with all of those things. So Civi for an organization will generally make up some portion, it might not be all of it, of the income side of things. Um, and the issue generally tends to be, OK, well, we've got income that's coming into Civi in some way, shape, or form that the fundraising team is using or the membership team is using in some way, shape, or form. And we've got our accountant or finance team that sits in a, a different room over here. How do we make sure that the accounts represent what is actually going on in Civi? And actually also, there's this other factor, which is things go into the bank account or don't go into the bank account. How do we make sure that those are reflected back in Civi the other way? And that's all kind of kept up to date. Yeah. Um, so yeah, is that? Yeah, just, just agreeing. <laughs> OK, good. If we, I'll have more of that, yeah? So if people want to just agree, that'd be good. Um, so, um, so in terms of defining integration, so the idea is to be able to export the financial transactions from Civi CRM in a controlled way that allows them to go into the accounting software package 
Um, so now Civi doesn't uh, out the box kind of define this as real time transfer or any of that stuff. Um, you know, I will talk about a bit later some you know electronic integrations that you can kind of do, um, but. Um, for the out-the-box kind of Civi, the idea is that something's happened in Civi. How do we reflect that correctly in the accounts package that we're using? Okay. Um, so what I would say is that um, QuickBooks was actually the accounting package that was targeted as the primary software. Um, so the team that kind of built the first iteration of the accounting um, sort of built uh, QuickBooks compatibility. So you'll see you're able to export to QuickBooks format. You are also able to export to CSV format, which means that you can do whatever you want with it. So uh, just to kind of be aware of that. And you certainly don't have to be on QuickBooks in order to kind of use CV. So don't worry about that at all. But if you are, then that's kind of handy. Um, OK, so since 99% of the room um, have been using Civi, I can kind of talk about some of the technical uh, aspects of Civi straight off. Um, so one of the things that happened in, in version 4.3 was that uh, we had this thing called contribution type. So contribution, which was effectively a payment or a donation that came into Civi, um, we had this, uh, you were able to kind of give them a different type. So we could say, well, this was a membership due and this one was a donation, this was an event fee, great. OK, so we can group those kind of things up. Um, but actually, what you wanted to do with those things might get a little bit more complicated when it came to, say, uh, refunds or accounts, and which account should they go in, and all of this normal ledgers and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so what kind of happened under the hood was that contribution types got rep uh, replaced with something called financial types. Um, so how many people were actually on 4.3 at some point? So we've got a couple as well. How many people have been since 4.3 only? So everybody else, so don't really care about this, just know what's there now. Okay, cool. Um, so addition of financial accounts uh, and this batch output mechanism. Okay. So um, this is a bit of a general slide as well. So what was the what was the other change? Well, they wanted to align fundraising, income-oriented categorization of transactions with accounts. So rather than having this concept of a contribution type, they wanted to move it away from that to talk about, OK, well, this payment should be going to, and hopefully I'm talking language that people understand here, uh, some sort of accounting ledger code or account uh, code that it should be uh, kind of represented against, taken into. Um, and to also understand the double entry nature of accounting. Um, which, for example, is the fact that if something isn't paid for yet, but you're expecting to receive it, it's an accounts receivable, and then later when you receive the payment, that then is the cash moved into your kind of cash account, and how that kind of all works. And I'll talk through that in a little bit more detail. Um, so what were the changes? What's the output of it? Higher confidence in your financial reporting, because you're not kind of basing it on uh, things in CIVI. Um, and if you do this right, you can avoid significant double entry of your contribution data. OK, so fundraising categories, revenue income, fully customizable. Yep, that's fine. Uh, every transaction has to be assigned to financial data. OK, so one of the things to understand with Civi is that um, every transaction now that comes into Civi will be assigned a, uh, a financial type. So all the contributions now have a financial type. Um, now, even if you never do any work with Civi integrating with your accounting system, um, every financial type automatically has a uh, financial account that is attached to it. And Civi will give it some default kind of settings in order so that things kind of run smoothly in the background, even if you do nothing. So you guys who are not kind of using Civi accounts yet are probably just, it's all sitting there in the background kind of ready to go. Yep, oh, first question. Um, can we have uh, multiple Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So the financial types... Yeah, I, I will get into that in a second, maybe, when I actually do it, I think. So let, let, me, just, let me just run through the slides, then I'll actually show it. Um, so yes, absolutely. You can have multiple financial types, and you can select the financial type for any particular payment, and then it goes into the appropriate accounting code uh, account that you want it to go into. Um, so each financial type um, has a particular configuration um, for it. Now, Civi kind of understands uh, the fact that we're looking at kind of income here. Um, and it wants to say, OK, for each financial type, um, which financial accounts are we going to be linking it to? Um, and these are the financial accounts are the accounting codes that you're going to have uh, within your 
uh, within your accounts package and that you want to relate it to. So within your accounts package, within the income uh, section, you will have lots of account codes with all the income codes that you want all the income to go to. And what, over here in Civi, what you want to do is you want to say, oh, OK, well, this income came in. I want to make sure that it goes to the appropriate accounting code as to is relevant when I'm going to export this data out and give it to my, uh, give it to my accountant so he can plug it in in the appropriate uh, account over here on, in the account system. Sorry, that wasn't the greatest explanation. But, um, so you have within uh, Civi five financial account types that you can kind of allocate to a uh, particular financial type. Um, and those are firstly to kind of say, okay, well, this income that we've got coming in, I want to allocate it to which revenue account, okay? So what type of income is it going to go to? So that's your, your first kind of accounting code. Um, and then you also have which asset uh, codes you want it to go into. So when the cash is actually received, which account do you want it to go to from an asset point of view? So you kind of say, okay, well, maybe all the income for this particular payment processor goes into the PayPal account, because then we reconcile the PayPal account against PayPal in the cloud every, every month or something along those lines. Um, so you might have multiple financial types that go to the same asset class, but you know, uh, this allows you to kind of configure that. Um, similar for uh, liabilities, uh, and I'll, I'll come to those later, so those are uh, costs that you might have. Um, expenses and cost of sales, so uh, we can kind of group those together in the sense that those will probably be your payment processor uh, costs. So if PayPal has, takes a charge, then that feeds back into Civi, and then you can kind of see that uh, also in the accounting entries as well. Um, oh, I've skipped a slide, yes. So, so you map the financial types to your financial accounts, uh, and each financial type is mapped to one and only one revenue account, asset account, and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, I'm just trying to think if I want to dive in and actually show you guys this. Okay. So if we go into Civi proper and have a, uh, a little look here, and we go to Civi contribute, um, within Civi contribute you'll see that we have our financial types. And these are kind of the default out the box financial types that, that you'll have. Um, and let's say that I want to create a new financial type which is for uh, a new type of member due. So uh, membership Actually, let's do it as a donation. Uh, so high net worth donations, something like that. Let's say they go into a particular account. And what we've got is high net worth do donations. And we can see here that um, the income account, it's automatically created a new income account for us, which is the high net worth donations. Great. So all the income in this is going to be automatically assigned to a particular um, revenue account. Um, and then we've got some other configurations for the account receivable account, uh, the expense account, the cost of sales account, etc. all of those kind of things there. Um, and if we have a look at the financial accounts, this is kind of the overview of all the accounts that Civi is going to be using. And you can see that it's added in our extra account, as we said, the high net worth donations. And we'll probably want to give this the equivalent code that that has within our accounting system. So let's say that one's uh, for 500. OK, great. So now, if I do a new contribution, and let's just say this is against a particular contact, Jackson Barkley. And I'm going to say high net worth donation. This person has given us 10,000. Amazing. I'm just going to set this contribution as completed. We've actually received the money. Uh, I'm going to say uh, ooh, check EFT or yeah, transaction. You might have an ID for that when it was received. Or receipt date, sorry. Uh, and save that. And what's happened is now that that transaction's kind of been recorded in Civi. Um, I might be slipping a little bit ahead. We're now able to kind of look at the 
transactions that have actually been put in the back end of Civi, and it's done the accounting entries for us to relate that. Actually, I think maybe one of the slides I go into that. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, I do pending membership, completed membership. Da, 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 da. Oh, maybe that's a bad example. So, so here, what I'm able to do is sort of open up a batch, and I'll go into this in a bit more detail in a second. I just want to show you guys the accounting entries. Here was the donation. I'm going to add that to a batch. Da, da, da. Excellent. Close and export. If I export the CSV, see if my laptop catches up. Go on. What you will see here is the accounting entries for that particular transaction, which your, uh, this will be a bit small for people to read, but basically we've got the debits and the appropriate credits which we've aligned. Um, but what you'll see is that we've got debit to bank, so debit uh, would be an asset that goes into bank, and credit which is going to our high net worth uh, income account. So the, for the people who kind of understand the accounting of this, this is the information that your uh, accountant will be able to then take on a transaction basis and import into the account system on a one by one basis. So that's a very simple example there where a single donation came in, it got put to the income account and it's gone to bank and therefore the two have come in. Uh, and we've configured that very quickly by creating a new financial type and just allocating a new income account for that to go to. But you can configure the appropriate account that you want that particular financial type to be recorded against. So I see in the slides I've actually got something a little bit more useful, so we can look at this in a bit more detail. Um, so we take a slightly more complicated example. Can everybody read this, by the way? Is that too small? Is that OK? Hands up if you can't read it at the back. No, it's OK. Cool. Um, so um, if we take a slightly more complicated example, whereby, for example, a membership payment or somebody purchases a, purchase a new membership, but they uh, haven't paid yet, their payment is going to come later. They say uh, they want to be invoiced for the membership, and we'll come back to that in a bit more detail. Um, the expected accounting entries for that, for anybody who's uh, not up on that, would be we want to credit uh, income, so credit to income. Um, and what you'll probably have is that your accountant will say, well, actually, because this is membership income and not donation income, I want this to go to a particular revenue account. I'm going to give you a number and say, hey, this is uh, membership revenue, and this needs to go to account you know, 4300, and that's what we've called it in our accounting system. So any membership income that's coming to, or sales that we do, I want it to go to 4300. Can you make sure the export comes to 4300? Fine. OK. So that would be the credit to income. And then we've got what we call a receivable, uh, or you know, an asset, uh, uh, a debtor. Um, and we want to uh, debit that to our accounts receivable account. So that's our double entry bookkeeping that we would do for a, uh, a membership, which is pay later, for example. Um, so we can do that in the system. So we could go in and say contribution, new contribution. Uh, I'm just going to make this very simple rather than actually setting up a membership. But um, So here, and then we would say, OK, member due. And this is 100. Great. And we're going to say that this is pending. And so one of the things to kind of point out with Civi is that if you want the accounting stuff to work, um, Civi loves a status field. So um, put the contribution into Civi, uh, set its status as pending. That sets all the appropriate accounting entries uh, correctly for you. So I know that the status field looks like it's not a very important field. Actually, on the contribution record, it's a super important field. And actually, within Civi in general, the status field should be in big red letters on the top right hand side so that everybody knows it's important. Um, so, so I've got 100 for this uh, member due that's pending pay later. And as I just showed you with the, the batch, um, we could say it's the end of the month. We've got to batch up all these transactions. We've got to send them over to the accountant. OK, I'm going to uh, create a new batch. 
Um, oh, yep, save. Save. And I'm going to add that transaction, assign to batch, go. OK. I'm going to close and export the batch, export to CSV. Hopefully, I won't crash Microsoft Excel. Excellent. And here, what we can see is that, as we said before, we were expecting the debit to go to the accounts receivable. So debit, accounts receivable. And we want the credit, so the double entry side, credit of the accounting is going to member dues, as we were saying, for the 100. So is everybody following me so far with the accounting stuff? Not, anybody not following? Any questions at that point? Not the camera guy scratching his head. OK. You're going to cover the tax? Yes, I'm going to get to tax, yeah. Uh, quicker, maybe. OK. Um, so just to kind of complete that, that cycle, if somebody then comes along and pays for that, i.e., it, we've given them the membership, it's pending, we're waiting for them to pay, we're expecting the money in, it's accounts receivable, they're going to pay for it. Uh, can't remember who the contact was now. Yeah, Barclay. We can go to the contributions and we can edit the contribution and update the status to completed. Excellent. So what accounting entries would we expect to that uh, would be credit the accounts receivable. So nothing happens to the income account. We know that we've got income there. That doesn't change. What changes is the uh, asset class. It goes from we've got an accounts receivable, but now actually what we're going to have is we're going to have the cash in the bank because um, we've received that. So we would go along and we would say, OK, um, edit completed, excellent. So if we now look at the uh, accounting batch when we do the next batch, and say, OK, it's the end of the next month. What happened in this month? Great. Jackson Barkley. He's there again. Close and export the batch. Export to CSV. Don't crash Excel. Great. Here we've got the uh, debit bank credit accounts receivable. So we've taken it out accounts receivable, and we've moved it into bank. Um, so all of that's there. So now your accountant knows, oh, hang on a second, yeah, we've received the cash. Great. OK, so I can update that. And then if the accountant goes to do his bank reconciliation, he'll see, OK, bank statement, got the money in here on the bank statement. OK, what's my account showing me? Yes, I also know that the, the money came in according to Civi and everything's up to date. Cool. Everybody follow that one as well? Yeah? Uh, so... Pardon? So, the, the, yeah, the, it's a county thing. So, dead click. So, debit, assets, expenses, something like that. <laughs> Drawings, uh, credit, income. God, it's been a while. Uh, credit, income, blah, 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 blah. Um, so, yeah, so basically, depending on your accounts, how you kind of look at it, but the, on the balance sheet, if you have an increase in an asset class, it is a debit. Um, and if you have a decrease in an asset class, it is a credit. So we are crediting the accounts receivable. And because any time you do anything in accounting, it has to be the same twice, debits and credits, all has to add up. That makes it all add up, because it used to be on a little book, and they used to do it on different pages. Um, therefore, we have the debits and credits, and that's the, those are the, the accounting entries that you want. And I'm just showing that Civi kind of reflects all of that. Um, upgrades, we don't care about so much. Um, and as I've just showed you, the accounting batches provide the export of the transaction. So all of this stuff is happening under the hood. You can just do the export to Civi, and it will, it will do it for you. And what I'll also mention is that, say, for example, you update a contribution. So you say, oh, no, no, it wasn't done by credit card. This was actually received by check. Um, then Civi will also create the appropriate transactions for that. It will move it out of the check class and move it into a uh, debit card if that needs to be done, for example. Um, so you can set all of that kind of stuff up. Um, so exploited in CSV. The only other thing I'd mention is that um, the CSV export only has a certain number of fields out the box, um, but it is extensible for developers. 
Um, so we've done some work before to get lots more information out of that CSV, and there's a hook there. So if you, if you aren't finding what you need, it can be extended. You can add extra fields to that export. Um, so yeah, so creating the batch, assign transactions to the batch, close or export the batch. So just showing you that, guys, that process. Uh, so after everything's going through, it'll probably be monthly that you want to kind of supply this information to your uh, accountant, maybe weekly. Um, you go to accounting batches. Don't confuse this with batch data entry. That's a completely separate thing. That's the other side of the process. Um, new batch. Here, you can filter out a particular payment instrument if you want to. So let's say you just want to do the PayPal ones. Let's say you just want to do the Sage Pay from the payment processor or just check, whatever it may be. Um, and then taking a look here at the list of transactions, select your transactions, assign them to a particular batch. So transactions can't be in more than one batch at a time. So once it's in the batch, once it's exported, you're not double counting. So this all kind of controls that process. Um, and then once you close and export the batch, it can't be reopened unless you get somebody to go into the database and make all of those changes. Okay? So close and export the batch. It can only, so the idea is that whatever happens in CIVI uh, gets copied in a secure and accurate way to your accounting system. So it can only be in one exported or closed batch, I think, but I'd have to check the logic as to whether or not, if you had two batches open and put one in, whether it would let you close them, but it will validate and not let you export out a transaction twice. Okay. Yeah. You could take it out. Yes, before it's closed, before the batch is closed, yes, exactly. So uh, the question I have in my head is whether or not, if I've put it in a batch that's open, will I find it to add it to another batch later? No. So I don't, no. I don't think you will, um, but I'm not 100% sure of that. What it won't let you do definitely is export it twice. Um, so anyway, so you have your batches here and you can view the transactions that were in a particular batch if you need to. Okay. Um, so, um, the other thing is that if you ever need to refer to things, there is a bookkeeping transactions report, which is quite helpful just to, to take a look through. Uh, so, bookkeeping transactions here, um, similar to normal CIVI reports, you can select the columns, there's extra columns if you want to, um, and then you can kind of see all the bookkeeping transactions here. So, it just gives you an overview and you don't have to do the whole batching process and do the exports again if you just want to see all of the things that are going on. So just to mention that that's there. I wouldn't recommend using this for supplying information to your accountant because obviously you don't know when a new transaction has been added to this list. Uh, so you, you won't have things complete in a kind of controlled fashion. Um, okay, the new bit. Uh, any questions on the old bit? Nobody cared about the old bit. We're all using it already. Okay. Easy one, though. <laughs> Yes. Once so you've in yeah. yeah, so once you've created, but once you've created a batch and closed it, yeah. it can't be reopened. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got four people, as soon as somebody closes it, people can't mess around with that. It's there. They can re-export it, you know, because you might want to download it again. You've lost the Excel or whatever it is, you know. Re-export the batch, but they can't put it into any of transactions to another. You can't change it. Yeah. So you could download the export, maybe is the best way to say it. You could click the button to get the file again, um, but you can't actually make any changes to the batch once it's been closed. So closed it, it's out, which is fine, because if you find actually you missed a couple of transactions for that month or whatever it may be, just open another one put those ones in there and just whack out another one and send that over to the accountant with a, an apology note. Uh, cool. Um, any, any more questions on that? Yeah, okay. I'm just conscious I'm going to keep people after um, five. Okay, so the new bit, uh, 4.6 plus, sales tax and invoicing, woohoo. Right, um, so uh, firstly to enable it, Civi contribute component settings, click the button, enable tax and invoicing, awesome. Um, so what features do we have? I'm probably going to go off the slides here, so I'll, I'll go through the slides if I forget anything. But um, invoice prefix, so uh, the invoices will be numbered with the same number as the contribution ID. 
Uh, a thing to watch out for here is that for things to be uh, legal VAT invoices, what you want is for the invoicing sequence to be sequential, i.e. one, two, three, four, five, six. You don't want to lose seven and then jump to eight. Uh, for VAT purposes, the VAT man will say, well, hang on a second, what happened to invoice number seven? Or did I say eight? Uh, seven? Uh, what happened to that? It's disappeared. Well, hang on, there's some income that you're not declaring here uh, that's, that may be vatable, sales tax, whatever it may be. Um, you know, so you've got to make sure they're sequential. So um, in CIVI, there is a separate delete contributions permission, and you don't want to be handing that out to people. If a contribution for any reason has to be null and void, you cancel it. You don't delete it. Because if you delete it, you've got rid of the invoice with it as well, and therefore you've got rid of your um, sequential uh, numbering. So you cancel it. One thing to say is that the admin or super admin, so if you're a one-man band and you're using this, does always have that delete per permission. So just be aware of kind of, of, kind of that fact. Okay? Is that, a Drupal permission? that is a Drupal permission, yeah. So you've got it, uh, he says. Sorry? Uh, somewhere, no, delete contribution somewhere. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> Leave it like that. Um, if it's not, let me know. Um, so uh, invoice prefix was just, you know, some people like to have something at the beginning which isn't that number. You might say sales order, invoice, whatever it is. Um, and then also for credit notes, you have a little prefix as well, which is, you know, just to dictate that it's a credit note. Um, and I'll very briefly touch on credit notes, which is the fact that, you know, if you refund, actually, Gwanon can tell me the logic of it, but if you refund or cancel as well, is it cancel? So if you refund or cancel, the system will create a credit note with a sequential number, but the sequential numbering for credit notes is separate to invoices. So obviously, you know, I've credited this back, but I don't credit all invoices, so we credit back the next one. Um, due date, you know, maybe 30 days from the date of receipt from transmission, so 30 days, and that's appended to the invoice. Um, do you want to automatically email the invoice to people when somebody purchases online? So this will attach the invoice itself document to uh, somebody who's purchasing online. Uh, not, not a question. Yes, a question. No. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, and then tax terms, so sales tax. So um, because obviously VAT isn't the same all around the world, uh, you know, you're able to change the name of it on all the forms, uh, etc. So here you can change it to VAT. Um, and then the other thing is that um, in, in some countries, from what I understand, there's different uh, requirements around how you display VAT on online forms. Uh, so having certain flexibility, you can do it. Um, do not, I realize that's really small, isn't it? Um, you know, show the tax term included. So uh, if something costs 120, uh, it will say 120, but includes tax of, or VAT of 20, or you can just show 120, or you can show 100 plus 20 VAT, whatever you want to do. So I'll do that one. So it splits it all out. James? Yeah. The, um, so about the email and the invoice. Yes. So does that become an option when you set up the form to be like, hey, late for check, do you have a enable invoice or something along those lines? Um, so if memory serves me correctly, if you tick this and somebody gets a confirmation email, it will attach the invoice to them, always. It's for, well, it's, it's, so invoices can be receipted as well. So and it, just because an invoice, uh, an invoice can be unpaid or an invoice can be paid. Okay. So if somebody pays for something immediately, i.e. by credit card, it's still an invoice they receive, but it's a receipted invoice, i.e. it says it's paid at the bottom. Could you, could you set this for a, send me a invoice type payment option on a, say, the bank? So yeah, so when you, once you've ticked that box, if somebody's going to receive a confirmation email, globally across the whole system, everything will always attach an invoice to them. Okay, so you can't set it on an individual event by event basis. We just said it's global, you're, it's on or it's off. Okay, I think. Um, so um, uh, what were we saying? So we, we've, we've kind of set that up. So now we've got uh, invoicing set up. So there's two kind of features here. There's, there's invoicing, so that's, that's that point. Um, and the other aspect is, is VAT. So um, now that we've kind of set it up and said we, we want to use this, we now have to kind of tell the system, OK, well, what uh, payments are subject to VAT? Um, so how do we do this? Um, we attach this. Uh, actually, somebody might have to remind me a little bit. 
let me just go through. Oh. So we're going to switch it. Oh, sales touch this. So sales touch, da, 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 process sales touch, integration with both form 30. Uh, don't need to show that. Yes, so set up the sales tax liability account. So I'll put these slides up so that anybody can kind of refer to this because obviously if you want to set it up yourself so you know. Um, so the first step to this is the fact that now that um, we are taking sales taxes, uh, given all that accounting stuff that I showed you before, we now need to make sure that the accounting entries for VAT are going to be correct as well. It's not very good for us to have all this accounting stuff and then to kind of plop on top of uh, you know, a form that says, OK, this is 100 plans plus 20 BAT to have membership. Um, but the VAT, we don't do anything with that. And we just put it all to the incorrect accounting codes. And then the accountant has to sort it out. That doesn't help us. And that's probably how everybody was using Civi before. So from now on, all, of the, all the sales tax works appropriately. Um, in order to do this, what you need to do is you need to set up the appropriate uh, sales tax liability account. Um, so I showed you the accounts before. So you go in here and you go to the financial accounts. I will add a financial account. And I'm going to say this is the VAT creditor um, owner default. And what are we going to say? This is a liability account. If I remember this rightly. Yeah, liability. Give it an accounting code. Here's one I made earlier. Accounting type code. So it might be for QuickBooks. They need that. Um, and here you'll see um, is tax. Um, we want to tick that because it is tax. Um, and then we want to give a tax rate. So in the UK, that's 20. Uh, and then uh, save. So that's point number one. So we've created the VAT creditor account. Uh, and you could call that something else if you, if you want to. So if you imagine what's kind of happening with VAT, um, I'll run through the uh, accounting. Let's do the accounting very briefly. Everybody loves a debit and a credit. So what are the appropriate accounting codes with VAT? Well. If we sell something for 120, uh, and let's say that this is a membership for 120, which had 20% VAT included on that. Um, so it's 100 for the membership, 20 pounds for, uh, for the VAT on top. Um, what would be the accounting entries for that? Well, revenue would be 100. God, I feel like I'm in accounting college here. Um, revenue would be 100. And then actually, the other side part of the credit is the tax creditor. Um, because this is a liability. So 20 goes to the tax creditor. Um, and then, you know, the debit, which is the whole 120, i.e. somebody's going to actually pay me 120. If it was a cash payment, it goes straight to cash. But if it's a receivable here, we put it into accounts receivable. So we're saying this one's pending. So it's 120 to the accounts receivable. Um, so what we're telling Civi before is, hey, this 20, put that to this accounting code. OK, so that's what we've created is the sales tax creditor account. The next bit that we need to do is tell it, OK, um, which types of payments in CIVI do we actually want to apply VAT to? So it might be donations have no VAT on them, but you know, membership dues do. And event tickets don't, but you know, if somebody makes a campaign contribution for whatever reason, that one does. Um, so then you go into administer, CIVI contribute, annual financial types. And I'm going to go to my membership dues here, and I'm going to say accounts. And I'm going to assign a new uh, account relationship here. And I'm going to say the sales tax account is. And I'm going to then put it to the VAT creditor. Come up. No, hang on. There you go. So what I've told the system now is, if somebody purchases a membership due, it should have that financial account details attached to it. Uh, and the details on that financial account for the sales tax are 20% VAT. So now, if I go to new contribution in the back end, does it do it on this form? So I have to check. If I say membership due, there we go, 100. And you can see it's done, the amount with tax is 120. And what Civi will do is do that all the way across the system. So if you create a, uh, an event form with event price set, um, and you say that the uh, line items for the event are going to have a financial type, which has VAT attached to it, it will add to the public form the VAT, the appropriate VAT amounts. 
and show them in the way that is uh, shown in that, uh, where I showed you in the administrator setting, so you can define the things. Um, so if we were to set up a contribution page, maybe if I've just got a contribution page, maybe that's the best one. Let's see. Membership levels. General student requirement membership sign up. I'm hoping this works in the way that I'm saying. There you go. So because these are membership I've got fine. Okay. Uh, because these are membership contribution types, you can see that it's now included said includes VAT of 20, and all of the accounting entries will be dealt with for you in the back end. So the same batch process, all of that kind of comes through uh, there. Cool. Okay. Um, and that goes through. So you set up the account, attach it to any financial types that have VAT, uh, and then configure Civi Contribute to work with that. Um, so what happens then? OK, so Civi will create a legal VAT invoice for all contributions. Um, those will be automatically emailed when somebody purchases online. Um, oh. Admin is, can download them from the administrator interface, he says. So if I go to Jackson Barclay, now that I've enabled all of this stuff, if I go to the contribution, I can go here, view the contribution. I'm able to print an invoice. Brilliant. OK. Actually, I'll do the one. Did I do one with VAT? I don't think I did. But anyway, let's do that. Desktop, blah, blah, blah. So then we've got our invoice with the numbering, etc. So invoice 96, that was uh, contribution number six, uh, uh, 96, etc. All the details. And you can see that this is a receipted invoice as well. So it says less amount paid, amount due is zero. So actually the amount due is zero, but this is a, a receipted invoice. Um, great. Um, admin can email. Or the other thing just to mention is that you can send them out in bulk. So um, if you do search and find contributions, um, search, bang, dumb, dumb, actions, uh, print uh, email contribution invoices, uh, print or email contributions. So if we do that one, what I want to do is email them, select the from address, put a little message at the top, um, and then send it out. If you click send, it will then send out them in bulk. So it might be that you kind of process all the uh, contributions, get them into the system, and then want to send out the invoices to everybody in bulk to let them know that, A, they've paid, or what the status is of all of those kind of things. Cool. If they've done it online, yes. Yeah. But it might be that you record it over the phone, for example, and then want to kind of send out the invoice, in which case you can send them out or do it in bulk, etc. Um, OK, so ah, the other feature is that uh, contacts can download their invoices from the contact dashboard. So if you have a contribution against your record, uh, I don't know if I will. Don't have any contributions. If I had a contribution here, um, what you'll find is that there will be a little uh, button for them to download uh, invoice as well. So the self-service dashboard, you can give that to people and say, OK, yes, and you can download your own invoices there. I don't have to get involved with the whole thing, which is always annoying. So that's that. Um, and credit notes for refunds, cancels automatically made. So similarly, if something's uh, refunded or credited, um, they will be able to download the credit note or refund directly from that screen as well, and everything's kept in sync. OK. Uh, when you have no, it doesn't email it automatically. So that's, yeah, so you then go into the system and email it to someone if you want to, yeah. Um, so as I said, you've got the invoicing configuration under the Civi, uh, Civi Contribute component settings. The only other thing to say is that you can modify the templates for the invoices. So there's kind of like a default template, uh, and you can go in there and just make some modifications to that if, if you'd like to change your logo and all of those kind of things, move things around uh, and tidy things up. Uh, and so that's just one of the, the templates in the system that hopefully everybody's familiar with. Hopefully I'm on time. I've got one minute, so I'm going to take a breath. Any questions? Yes. Excellent. Let's stop there. <laughs> uh, some things I'm, I'm wondering about. Uh, am I correct that I have to decide whether I use invoices or not? So if I 
select a print invoice, but if it's a select invoices, then all my contributions will get an invoice. Yes, yes. Anyhow, if it's, for instance, a, um, an uh, event uh, fee or a donation. Yes. So, yes. Civi will make an invoice for everything. In effect, what it's doing, every contribution becomes like an order, becomes an invoice. Um, and it's kind of like a, trying to... Um, That's a pity. Trying to solid up... Well, not necessarily. Because, so, uh, because it makes it unusable uh, uh, for our country, at least. Oh, really? Because um, we have special uh, donation receipts, which is mandatory for donations, which mm. are... Uh, mm. Mm. Uh, since we want to have uh, invoices only for those things uh, that contain VAT. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, separate use cases for different countries and how it can work needs to be kind of looked at. Um, but what we found was that the, um, the fact that Civi does invoices for everything uh, and the fact that they are sequential um, means that if you only want to pick out specific ones within that sequence, they're all there. So um, Civi sequence can sit alongside an existing accounting system sequence, which, and hence why you have the prefixes, which are different. So Civi's prefixes can be different from a separate accounting system's prefixes if you want to use that. I appreciate that it might be different um, in you know, kind of other countries as to how it works. Yeah, yeah. But there's I'm, I'm very interested in this because it's, yeah. for all of us, it's uh, extremely nice. Yeah. Well, Okay, yeah. Let's have a chat. It'd be great. Cool. At the back. Yeah, uh, just a quick question. I don't know if it's a question, but that's probably not fun. But what to do when you've got an invoice and you've got CML, it's just a CML, so you collect all the spend and you just do this, for example, you just pay for, you need to pay five pounds to pay for. How do you collect that? How do you collect the spend of the bank account? Okay, so. Um, what I would say is that Civi support for accounting concepts in general is not at the level of an accounting system. Um, it simplifies things. So, for example, a contribution is either pending or it's completed. So there isn't really a partially paid phase within kind of Civi's context. So that's kind of been included in like Civi event recently, and that isn't supported by all the VAT and invoicing things. So just be aware of that. Um, but um, you know, kind of to be fully compliant with all the things that you need from an accounting point of view, you need to be able to credit back a certain amount, record underpayments, overpayments, things like that. There are workarounds, so if that is something that always happens in your organisation, so for example, um, they can be recorded as costs against it, and civil, there are workarounds, they're just not quite as clean um, as, you, as, you, as you might hope, um, because Civi kind of simplifies a few of these accounting concepts. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So that's that can be used for underpayments uh, if you if you wanted to. So yeah. That's that's exactly it. So that's how the, that's how it works with the fee amounts. Yeah. So if if the payment processor has a fee, it feeds that back through the API, and then that goes back into um, you know that goes back in there and recorded, and then it gets put up, pulled out with the export. Yes, if the if the payment process has been set up in that way. Any other questions? Are we all ready for biz? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much for sitting yeah. through.